Three reasons why Kawhi Leonard will resign with the Toronto Raptors. Coming up right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to the Waterboy Report. It's your boy Luca Rosano back with another podcast. And here we are, fresh out of the NBA All Star Weekend. And here we're now gearing up for what's sure to be a fantastic second half of the NBA season. I know it's going to be a wild ride. We got past the deadline, and then, you know, we have the All-Star break where guys, they joke around, they're having a good time, they're playing with guys they'll probably never get to play with, some of them at least. Um, obviously, for Stephen Curry, you get to play with a guy like Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson every single day, but for a lot of these guys, it was a unique experience getting out there, putting on a show for the fans, and I thought all in all... The NBA All-Star Weekend, it was what it was. It was all right. It could have been a lot better, uh, most notably the dunk contest. Hopefully that gets resurrected next year with the rumor already being that Zion Williamson will face Diallo, who won this year's dunk contest. The two of them actually competed in a dunk contest back in high school, which Diallo lost to Zion. And then he said that uh, he would love for the rematch to happen on the NBA stage in next year's dunk contest. So maybe we have that to look forward to. But nonetheless, guys, the second half of the basketball season should be a great one as we gear up for the postseason I cannot wait for playoff basketball as I'm sure many of you can't wait either but we're gonna actually begin today's show talking about something that happened on Saturday in regards to Kawhi Leonard so there's no surprise the narrative the storylines around Kawhi Leonard are all about what's he gonna do this summer is he going to re-sign with the Raptors is he going to go play uh, for the Clippers or the Lakers is he going to leave Toronto is he not so of course those questions came up during the NBA All-Star break and on Saturday Kawhi was uh, he was asked a couple of questions you know talking about his time so far in Toronto and if he's liking to stay and just to comment on his current situation and uh, his uh, his answer was pretty much he, he said it's it's great energy out there it's great energy out there the fans come out uh, they're very supportive it's a great city there's a lot to do it's just been cold. Uh, Leonard told an assorted mass of reporters uh, he went on to say also the snow does look nice on days. But you just need a jacket to go outside. I'm not used to wearing boots and everything. But as far as the whole city, team, coaching staff, organization, fans, it's been great. So these are the words of Kawhi Leonard on Saturday when he was asked to talk about uh, Toronto and the Raptors up until this point and his stay so far with the team. So I'm okay with that answer. I would take that answer any day of the week. He complained about the cold, but heck, I complained about the cold, and I was born and raised in this city. So I'm going to give him a pass with that answer. I think that's a great answer. At least he's liking the coaching staff. At least he's liking the environment. At least he's liking the fans. So I'm liking that response from Kawhi Leonard. Um, but yeah, hopefully it gets warm soon over here in Toronto so Kawhi Leonard uh, can enjoy some of that warm heat that he's used to experiencing back home but this is actually going to segue me guys into what the bulk of this podcast is going to be about and this is uh, three reasons why I believe that Kawhi Leonard when it's all said and done will resign with the Toronto Raptors I know we there's been so many people already ruling out the possibility saying he's a goner as soon as the season is done the Raptors are going to go back to the bottom of the uh, you know of the the conference they're going to be irrelevant no one's going to talk about them anymore Kawhi is going to leave and then we're going to lose Gasol and this team is going to go from almost winning the championship back to the bottom of the conference but I beg to differ because I'm going to I'm going to tell you guys in this piece why I believe Kawhi Leonard will resign this summer and he will be a part of this team for many years to come and I think the Raptors are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the East for many many seasons to come so we're actually going to begin here guys with number three the third the number three reason why I think Kawhi Leonard will resign with the Raptors let's face it he's treated like a king here the fans love him. Nick Nurse isn't hard on him like Popovich was. This is his team, and the players accept that. And also, he doesn't have to play in any back-to-back -back games. That's not a bad gig for a guy making $23 million a year. Maybe that's why Kawhi's been smiling a lot more than usual. So that's my number three reason. My second reason as to why I think Kawhi Leonard will resign with the Raptors this summer, well... 
He doesn't want to play under LeBron James' shadow in L.A. According to former NBA player and now ESPN analyst Jalen Rose, he believes that Leonard wouldn't want to play for the Lakers because he'll be playing under James' shadow. Rose also added that the appeal of the 6'7 forward continuing to play in Toronto is that he is backed not only by the entire city, but also by the entire country of Canada as the lone NBA team in the nation. That is going to be hard for Leonard to pass up, knowing that he wants to be the franchise player and not just play under the shadow of someone as big of a star as LeBron James. And you look at the other Los Angeles team, the Clippers, I don't think he'll want to go there because even if he does go to the Clippers, I still think the Clippers would be ways away from winning a title. And obviously, Kawhi Leonard wants to win wherever he goes and chooses to go. And my number one reason as to why... I believe Kawhi Leonard will re-sign with the Raptors. If he does, the Raptors are going to be the beasts of the East for many seasons to come. With LeBron James out of the Eastern Conference, the East is looking for a new beast to emerge, and that beast can very well be the Raptors. The Raptors already have the Sixers number. The Celtics could lose Kyrie this summer. And we don't know if the Bucks are legit contenders just yet. So if Kawhi stays for the long haul and he continues to flourish with emerging young talents like OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam, the Raptors can very well be a force to be reckoned with for many years to come in the NBA. That means many more finals appearances for Kawhi and more chances to win rings because obviously the path coming out of the East is a lot easier than coming out of the West, especially if the Golden State Warriors stay as they are now. And for those saying that Kawhi Leonard did purchase a home recently in LA, it's not as far-fetched as you think for a multi-million dollar NBA athlete to own two homes, uh, one being where he's from and one being where he's currently playing. Because if you guys do remember, he also bought a home in Toronto before he purchased his home in LA. So it's not that crazy for a very wealthy NBA player to own multiple properties. So I'm not looking into that any more than it needs to be looked at. I think Kawhi Leonard is enjoying his time here. I think he is having a good time, and what is going to solidify all these three points that I just said is if the Raptors at least make it to the NBA Finals, because if they do make it to the NBA Finals, he sees how easy it is to come out of the East, and he sees the promise and the young promising talent on this team, I think it's a no-brainer for Kawhi that he's going to want to remain for the long haul with the Raptors and continue to be a part of this team, so... It's going to be a big, big second half of the season for the Raptors and Raptors fans. But ultimately, I think if this team continues to win and they perform at a high level, you mix that in with the three reasons I just gave you. Kawhi Leonard will, in fact, re-sign with the Raptors this summer. And you heard it right here on the Waterboard Report podcast. All right, we're going to switch gears now to Michael Ricci's L&W of the week. We're going to start with the L of the week. And the L of the week is going to be the dunk contest. Now, I know we got the great dunk of Diallo paying tribute to Superman and Vince Carter and dunking over Shaquille O'Neal. But I still think, as a whole, the dunk contest fell flat. And we desperately need that rumored dunk off between Zion and Diallo next year. If that happens, I would pay good money to see that. If not, I think they honestly got to make the dunk contest the third event as opposed to the final event to close out NBA All-Star Saturday. Um, and then my W of the week is going to be the three-point shootout, which I think should be the highlight event on NBA All-Star Saturday. And it's actually Joe Harris, who is this year's three-point shootout winner, beating out Buddy Heald and Steph Curry in the final. And this guy continues to make it look easy from beyond the arc. And he's a big reason why the Brooklyn Nets are going to be a team you have to keep an eye out for in the second half of the season because this is a playoff team right now. And if they get in and stay in, as I assume they will they're not going to be a team you want to play especially in the first round of the playoffs so Joe Harris is my W of the week and really the whole three-point shootout is my W of the week I I very much enjoyed watching that event I thought it was great entertainment all right guys we're gonna now get into one of my favorite segments of the show and it is going to be Dave and Buster's Your Questions. So the first question is going to be from the real NWB. He asks, does the All-Star Weekend format need to be tweaked a little bit? I, I, I think so. I, I touched on it briefly. Um, I think they honestly should close 
uh, Saturday night with the three-point shootout. I don't think people care about the dunk contest anymore. Unless you're going to do Diallo against Zion next year, I think you should just put the dunk contest uh, before the three-point shootout and let the three-point shootout end the, the Saturday night festivities. As far as the All-Star game goes, I mean... There was a point in last night's game where the competitive level wasn't as high as you would hope it to be, um, but I don't know how you can really spice that up. You're not going to make it uh, where, uh, you know, once upon a time ago, the MLB had it where the winner of that game would get home field advantage in the final or home court advantage in the final. I don't think you want to put that much significance on this game, but at least if the players, I want to see a little bit more fight and a little bit more competitive spirit in the game, that's all I would ask for. So those are probably the two things I would want to tweak. Uh, the th- the three point shootout being ahead of the dunk contest and closing out Saturday and then of course the players playing with just a little bit more edge on uh, on the uh, during the Sunday's game of NBA All-Star weekend. Thank you for the question. Next question from Daniel underscore Forden underscore. He asks, how far can the Thunder go in the playoffs? I think their ceiling is Western Conference Finals. I think this team can get there. Um, are they going to get to the final? I don't think so because right now I don't see any team being the Golden State Warriors to put it simple for everybody watching this or listening. But the Thunder can very well make it to the Western Conference Finals and they can make things interesting in a potential Conference Final showdown with the Warriors. So I think the Thunder, they have the talent. I really like their pickup of Morris uh, post-trade deadline. They just signed him a couple days ago. I did a piece on that. Uh, I really like this team moving forward and I I think this is going to be one of the better Western Conference teams that we have uh, come playoff time in the postseason and really making a run at challenging Golden State. I think this team can do that. Will they dethrone Golden State? I don't think so, but they can definitely make it to the conference final. Next question from Andrew Candeleus. What was your favorite moment from All-Star Weekend? It was a three-point shootout, man. Like I said, it was great entertainment. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it, it had uh, it had a lot of interest to it. We had some some parody. Uh, we had a great storyline developing with you know the underdog Harris that who nobody picked going up against the greatest shooter of all time and Steph Curry. You had Buddy Heald kind of come out of nowhere as well. So I thought it was very fun and it was it was entertaining because it was competitive. Like you could tell the guys wanted to win. Uh, I remember Devin Booker being super upset with his performance because he just missed out making it to the final. And of course he came in as the defending champion. So just to see that that upset him and he was grimacing like, oh damn, I was that close at making it to the final. Like that's what I want to see. We have the best athletes in the sport come together for a week and you want to see that competitiveness that competitive fire really showcase against when these guys go against each other so to see something like that I thought it was fabulous I thought it was remarkable and that was my favorite moment the entire three-point shootout I think was very very fun to watch next question from Dan Aconda 22 should the Clippers tank or try to make the playoffs so obviously you know you look at the Clippers and I'm actually just gonna pull up the uh, the NBA standings right now. Uh, sorry, guys, I've been in uh, I've been in NBA All Star mode weekend. Uh, the Clippers right now are in eighth place, so they got the last playoff spot. The Kings trailed them by a game, and the Lakers trailed them by three games. Yeah, the Clippers are in a particular you know spot here. Uh, they've been one of the surprises of this season. At one point, they're I think third place in the conference. They were really competing. They beat the likes of Golden State. I think they shouldn't necessarily tank, but at the same time. Uh, you know, looking at this team going forward, are they really going to be a contender or do much of anything in the playoffs? They're probably just going to get swept by the Golden State Warriors as it stands now. So maybe you got to start looking at it from that perspective. Maybe if you miss the playoffs, you get another good draft pick to to go with that already young, talented core of players that you're that you're building around right now. I think you got to look that as you got to look at that as a big possibility. But uh, I mean, you never want to tell your team to tank, especially when you're in a playoff spot. So. I would say maybe it's good experience too for these guys, even if you are going to get swept in a first round playoff matchup against the Warriors, to still make it to the playoffs. So right now, uh, I'll put it this way. If for the next month or so, they're still in that eighth spot, I say you go for the playoffs, you go all in. But if you start to falter a little bit and you start off uh, start off the second half of the season a little bit slower than expected, then I think you just call it quits for the rest of the season and you just play the game in terms of getting a good draft pick come this year's draft. So that's my, my, that's my long explanations for saying if you think you have a good chance at making the playoffs you play it out if you don't that's it you call it a wrap and you play for the lottery as many teams will do you think Kyrie Irving will leave Boston and why this question comes from Janita underscore Freshka 
So you know what? I'm not going to get too much into this. I just got a gut feeling, and I've said it before again on the show, that I do think Kyrie Irving will be reunited again with LeBron James in LA. Like, that's my big, bold prediction for this summer. I think that's going to be the big move that we look at. Like, wow, I can't believe that happened. Something is just telling me that is going to happen. So you know what? I'm going to go with that. If it, if it happens to go the way I think it's going to go, I look like a genius. If not, I don't look like a genius. I'm willing to take that risk. I think Kyrie is going to go play with LeBron James in LA. I think everybody wants to go to LA at this point. Uh, LeBron James was smart because the players he drafted, part of his all-star team, could very well be the players he recruits this summer to join the Lakers. So he's a smart dude. LeBron James knows what he's doing. So uh, don't underestimate the king and his recruiting abilities. And uh, final question right here from Raptors underscore clutch underscore hoops. He asks, which team will get to the finals in the East and how would that impact this year's free agency? So I kind of touched on this before. I got the Raptors going to the finals. I'm sticking with that pick. I said it before the season. I'm riding out with the Raptors. And if they do make it to the finals, along with the three reasons I presented in this podcast, I think Kawhi Leonard will stay with the Raptors. So that's how it will affect free agency. Teams like the Clippers, teams like the Lakers, uh, I don't know, even the team like the Knicks will not get Leonard, and Leonard will stay with the Raptors, and they will continue to be the class of the East. That's it, guys. That was a fun podcast. Very, very great. Try to do better next week, but uh, yeah, that is it. Again, if you guys are new to the podcast series, all you got to do, hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the bell so you stay notified on my podcasts and live streams. Also, drop a like on this video if you haven't already. Comment with your thoughts down below. Let me know if you agree with my main point of the show that Kawhi Leonard will resign with the Toronto Raptors because of the three reasons that I presented. So let me know what you thought of the podcast. And as always, thank you for watching. Until next time, stay cool. Peace out. I'm out. And I'll catch you guys again next week.